welcome back and we are talking about nothing but stock market there is nothing more interesting than the stock market itself so firstly we need to understand what the stock market means so stock market is nothing but a combination of these two words that you can see in front of you one is stock and the other one is market so what do we mean by market firstly market is as we know market is a place where you can buy as well as sell so wherever there are two these two things happening buying and selling that is called as market but what are we buying and selling is is it just some random stuff that we are buying or selling no we are buying and selling stocks that is why we call it as stock market now what is this stock the stock is nothing but shares shares of what shares of a public listed company now what do we mean by a public listed company you have to understand something for that purpose first you need to understand what is a company so company is a company as per the companies act okay what is the companies act companies act 2013 there is a law for that purpose so whatever the company comes into the picture as per this companies act we call it as a company now this company is called as a private limited company okay private limited company why do we call it as private limited company because the owners of this company are limited to a few private people the ownership not the owners because the owners are private among themselves they know each other very well so for example there are uh, 10 people who are knowing each other and they are contributing to the capital of the company and they become the owner so these are the 10 people who are actually uh, running owning managing everything they are doing about the company now what happens as the company grows it requires more capital so one way of getting more capital is through public so when you start getting money from people from the normal public like you and me from the aam janta that process is called as ipo i believe most of you would have heard this term initial public offering ipo stands for initial public offering so when a private company tries to become public that entire process is called ipo and it is regulated by securities and exchange board of india this is sebi sebi comes into the picture when you go public because public public's money is being involved and whenever you are involving public government has to step in between and the government comes in the form of sebi so this entire process is called ipo now this uh, uh, once this company is what we can say uh, uh, listed in the stock exchange that company becomes a public company it does not remain as a private limited company because it has raised capital from public now once it raises capital from public this is called this this happens only for the one time like right? this is for the first time that is why we call it as initial public offer so the company offers to the public its shares public gives money and public gets shares now when this public wants to sell like whoever has got the shares if they want to sell the shares where will they go they will come to the stock market so this is the place where these list shares of a listed company are being bought and sold now in india we have a stock exchange okay what is this stock exchange this stock exchange is nothing but the stock market that we have where you can exchange your like the traditional name has been stock exchange that is why we calling it as stock exchange now in india there are two ex stock exchanges what are they one it's called as national stock exchange and the other one is called as bombay stock exchange these are the two ex stock exchanges as of now that we have nse and bac so these are these are nothing there is no difference as such just like some random fraction of uh, uh, what we can say fraction points of difference would be there otherwise they are just competitor to one another nse and bac now as of now most of the trades happen through nse earlier there was only one that is called as bombay stock exchange like not one there were many more but the major functional one was this one only but after the harshad mehta scam the government decided to uh, open up with one more uh, stock exchange called national stock exchange so as of now we have these two so now what we understood so far is what is stock market stock market is a place where you can buy and sell shares what shares shares that are listed in the stock market and how does that listing process comes into the picture how does it happen it happens through the process of call, something called as ipo when a private company becomes public now what is the limitation for this private company 10 is 10 was just an example for a private limited company 200 is the maximum limit more than 200 people cannot be part of a private limited company whenever there is more than 200 people the company has to be converted into a public company now this company when it is listed in the stock exchange it is called as listed company and these shares are bought and sold so this is what is what is called as two conditions are there public and listed company should be there so as to be traded in the stock exchange right that is what is stock market now 
how can you buy and sell the stock market uh, shares in the stock market that is also very simple there are a few requisites to it one you must be 18 years of age why do you need to be 18 years of age because there is something called as indian contract act 1872 now this is an act which allows you to contract now when you're buying the shares it is a contract between you and the company you become the owner of the company so so as to enter the contract this indian contract act asks you to be a major you cannot be a minor minor cannot be a shareholder of the company so what happens cannot be a member of the company so you have to be major and as per the indian majorities act again this age comes to be 18 plus so if you are not 18 plus you have to manage it some way or the other you have to get it open through somebody else then what else do you need you need a bank account okay now this bank account is again very simple once you are 18 years of age you can open your bank account with any random bank that's not a criteria but make sure that you have uh, what we can say net banking that is like an added advantage as of now there is no as such requirement you can use uh, upi or other modes of payment but still it is good if you have this feature but bank account is must 18 years of age being must then what do you need you need to have a trading account and a dmat account now what are these two trading and dmat account okay you have to understand now people get confused between trading and dmat account they consider trading account and dmat account as one and the same but these are two different accounts trading account is different dmat account is different first we will understand trading account so so far uh, we uh, we have seen that you know so as to uh, enter in the market you have to buy shares either from nse or from bse these are the two markets that we have as of now in india so so as to buy shares from these markets you need to be member of the market so only members can trade in the market now you getting the membership of the market is very difficult so what we have in the picture is there is somebody called as broker so someone who has broke this broker is someone who has got the membership who has got who is the member of these stock exchanges and this broker will allow you to trade you can ask your broker to buy or sell the securities and this broker will do your job in return of a commission now who are these brokers there are a number of brokers you can like refer to as zerodha or there is something called as grow or up stocks or it can be anyone okay i'm just naming a few but you can refer to any random broker these are some of the discount brokers now what is discount broking uh, that is also we need to understand discount brokers are the brokers who work in heavy discounts these brokers will not give you any additional service because uh, like there are some brokers traditionally they have been offering a lot of services like you can just call them and ask them to do a lot of things like they will do that but they will charge money for everything whatever they are doing whatever service they are providing they will give you extra tips advices everything they will do your portfolio management but they will charge extra money for that but these discount brokers they provide very heavy discounts and uh, what we can say in the form of brokerage brokerage is the commission that broker charges for you from you so as to make you trade so for zero the as the name suggests this brokerage is zero for delivery trades we'll understand what is delivery and what other things are for now you just need to understand that these are the brokers who will charge uh, some kind of brokerage and you need to have your trading account open now what is this trading account trading account is just like a bank account you can you open your bank account with rbi no the same way you cannot open your trading account with uh, nse or bse you have to open it with a broker so these brokers are just like the banks in between ultimately the controlling authority is uh, rbi for the banks the same way ultimately the controlling authority is going to be uh, sebi under sebi these are the st stock markets but you cannot open directly your bank account with the stock market you have to get it open through these brokers one of the brokers any broker you choose of your choice be it uh, like anybody depending upon which one you like just like the banks you can choose right but what if you can give instructions using this trading account you can give your instructions to the broker that i want to buy this much or sell this much now once you have bought a particular security or share where are you going to store it so as to store it you need this account called as dmat account so this dmat account is opened through uh, opened uh, uh, opened with either of the two companies what are these two companies in india there is one company called as cdsl and the other one is called as nsdl so you have to open your dmat account either of these two companies but the good thing is you need not to go to them directly once you approach one of these brokers this broker will automatically get your dmat account opened with one of these 
depositories this cdsl and nsdl is are called as depositories cdsl stands for central depository securities limited and nsdl stands for national securities depository limited now for example once you approach zeroda for your trading account zeroda will automatically approach cdsl why cdsl because zeroda has partnership with cdsl some of these companies have partnership with cdsl some of these companies have partnership with nsdl these are the depositories which are going to store your secure securities in their dmat accounts okay so what you will get you will get a trading and a dmat account trading come dmat account all together so these are not going to be two different accounts uh, like uh, you need not to open two different accounts but you are going to get two different accounts okay so once you have these things you just need to uh, go ahead with your see so as to open this bank account you are going to need your pan as well as aadhar these th two documents once you have you are also going to have your bank passbook if you have a bank account automatically you will have your bank passbook so that is also going to be included and with this information you can actually open your account and start trading in the market now once you have the account how does it happen so once you start buying when when it comes to orders right okay when it comes to orders or uh, let's not go get into the orders first let's understand something called as uh, what we mean by trading in the market so when you enter the market there are two things one is called as trading and the other one is called as investing now what is the difference for example i want to buy reliance industries okay now reliance industries as of now it is trading at 2000 600 this is an example okay so if i'm buying if i know that reliance industries would become how much if i'm expecting it will become 5000 after 10 years okay after 10 years now after 10 years if it becomes 5000 and with this expectation i'm buying ril so i'm going to hold it for at least 10 years right now if i'm holding it for 10 years it is what it is nothing but my investment in the company because i am going to be the owner of the company for next 10 years but in the same way if i'm just buying ril at 2600 and i'm selling it at the rate for example 2650 so 50 rupees is the only profit i have made that is going to be trading if i'm doing it for the short term it is going to be trading if i'm being there for the long term it is going to be investing now how does it make a difference if it is trading or investing the difference is going to be of how long you are there in the picture now whether it is 2650 or something different it is going to be determined now this short term this trading it can be for a day or for a week for a month that's not a concern it can be for any but your intention was to hold it for the profit now if you're invest investor in the market you're not going to be looking forward for the profit you're looking forward to generate wealth you're looking forward to double triple or four times like n number of times your money but a trader is looking for a small fraction of amount as what we call it as profit now if profit is your intention you're going to be a trader but if you're just looking for a day there is something called as intraday okay now what is this intraday intraday stands for within a day if you are buying the share and trying to make a profit within a day that is called as intraday trade whether you are making profit or not but your intention was to make a profit within a day then that makes you an intraday trader so market as of now the market starts at 9:15 am and it ends at 3:30 pm so the, in between this time frame if you are doing the trade if you are entering the trade and exiting the trade you are called as an intraday trade no how can you enter or exit either you buy first and then you sell it or you sell first and then you buy it how would it happen you can buy let's suppose you can buy at 100 and you can sell it 102 so 2 rupees is going to be your profit the same way if you are selling it at 100 you need to buy it at lower than this for example 95 so 5 rupees is going to be your profit how does it happen this is this is actually called as this uh, uh, selling first and this part is very simple you bought at 100 you sold at 102 but what if you buying at 100 uh, you are selling at 100 and buying at 95 can we do this yes you can do this in intraday you cannot do this otherwise but in intraday you can sell first and buy later what we call it as this is called as short selling have you heard of this term short selling no so let me make it clear short selling is for example uh, you 
know a particular share you can see the chart and this chart is like this you have observed that this share is trading here at 100 as of now and it is going to be at 95 later on this is what you are expecting now if you are very clear very very sure of it you can always sell it how would it happen when you place a sell order at 100 what happens is you you don't have the share you you would be thinking that if i don't have a particular security if i don't have a particular share how can i sell it you don't have it as of now but your broker does have so what will happen your broker will actually lend you like for example you're looking forward to sell thousand quantity right so thousand quantity the broker will give you as loan and the broker will ask you to return the same amount of shares the same quantity of shares at the end of the day it doesn't matter at what price you bought so you first you borrowed thousand shares you sold them at 100 then at the end of the market when the price came down to 95 you bought the same shares at at, at this price of 95 and what what happened you got 1000 shares and you returned the same shares to your broker so and at the end what you did you made a profit of 5 rupees in between that is your sure shot profit that is called as short selling but it has to be clear the risk is if you don't again same way the risk is there in this this kind of scenario also when you where you're buying but the same risk is here also it's this is the risk with intraday actually that this trade has to be executed whatever you are buying you have to sell it at the end whatever you are selling you have to buy it at the end there is no going back there is no as such key what if i don't want to sell you cannot do that because at the time of placing the order there are going to be two options what are going to be do those two options one of this option you are going to get as such whether you want to place an mis order or you are going or you want to place a cnc order now these the, the, the this is the terminology used in uh, zero da what i am referring to but M, uh, this is going to be very similar for others mis is nothing but your intraday order so once you place an intraday order you will get something called as margin what is this margin for example your broker is giving you a uh, 20 percent margin so if you are buying a share of 100 rupees you need not to pay the entire amount of 100 you just need to pay rupees 20 balance 80 you can keep 80 rupees balance broker will give you as loan so what happens now so as to buy so if uh, with this like if you have 100 rupees in your pocket if you want to buy see the other one is just a reverse of it cash and carry it means you have to take the delivery of the share so the good thing about delivery or the bad thing about the delivery is the shares will be credited to your account in t plus two days now what does it mean trading day plus two days so for example today i am buying after two days the uh, uh, shares will be credited in my dmat account okay so trading day plus two days so that is the delivery but to, so as to get this delivery i have to pay the full price of 100 rupees but 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 this is for cnc but when i'm going with mis or intraday i just need to pay the margin amount if my broker is asking for only 20 percent so i just need to pay 20 rupees so what is going to happen with this 100 rupees i can buy how many five shares so 20 into 5 becomes 100 i have just 100 rupees so vast one share cost 100 rupees but i have uh, only 100 if i'm taking delivery i will get only one quantity but if i'm going for intraday i can get 100 into 5 which is which means 500 i need 500 but of that 500 i just need to pay 20 percent which is 100 rupees so with that just same 100 rupees i'm getting five quantity now so if i'm getting a profit of one rupee per share so here my profit was just one rupee but in this scenario i can make a profit of one into five which is going to be five times more than this one but i have to make compulsorily what if i'm not making what if there is a loss then also i have to accept the loss there is no going back there is nothing as such what i can do but in case of cnc i have actually bought the share so even if there is a loss i can still hold the share i can wait for the share to come back again to the normal price but in this scenario in case of intraday i cannot do anything as such so that is the difference between intraday and delivery that part also you have to understand so this intraday how does it happen this intraday starts this intraday is like within a day so it starts between the time frames that we have discussed just over here 9 15 and 3 30 but uh, 3 30 is also not the time you get the, the there will be a lesser time than this one which what you get like for example in zero the the time limit is 320 you have to settle your trades before 320 if you're not settling the broker will settle it automatically and the broker is going to charge a penalty of 50 rupees as well so that part also you have to understand in case of 
uh, intraday if you are not settling your trade on time broker will charge a penalty because the broker has to do it manually for some it is 310 for some it is 315 depending upon which broker you are choosing you have to look into this time frame for intraday and it starts at 915 okay for intraday traders that is what we need to understand for intraday trades right now talking about something intraday is going to be a trading the same way you can hold the share for a few more days and that we got that that is referred as swing trade so this this is called as like i bought a share at 100 and my target price is for example 120 so i waited for for example one week so this after this one week i got that uh, the share was trading at 100 and i got a swing of 120 so i bought at 100 and i sold at 120 so the in between whatever swing i have got because of that we call it as swing trading that is also what is quite popular in the market right but when it comes to investing you need to understand a certain things investing is for the long term okay now investing is for the long term you have to understand what the company is how does it perform what are the things that part we will understand when we are doing the fundamental analysis okay this was just fundamentals basics of stock market how things work how things go but investing part we'll understand when we are doing fundamentals for trading what is important you have to understand that part for trading buying at a lower price selling at a higher price selling at a higher price buying at a lower price that is the thing so you have to understand when to buy and when to sell that is covered through something called as technical analysis timing is very important right because if you're at the wrong time you you will end up making losses so so as to understand the technical analysis we'll have a separate discussion how this technical analysis works so one more lecture is there on the fundamental analysis one more lecture is there on the technical analysis but before understanding fundamental and technical technical analysis there is something what what is called as candle chart so we need to understand candlestick as well what is this candlestick how does it perform what are the functions of the candlesticks for for this video we're just stopping for this class we're just stopping over here with fun, uh, basic idea ideology of what stock market is i believe you understood what stock market is how does it function and how you can enter to the market right